Hey, this is Nick from Financially Aware, and in this video, I want to explain the difference between a stock split and a reverse stock split. It seems uh, a lot of comments I see in my videos about the USO ETF reverse stock split video that a lot of people are still a little confused on how it works. So I'm going to explain a regular stock split and tell you why companies do that and I'm going to explain a reverse stock split and explain why companies do that and the reason companies do these things are for two completely different reasons so one of them is for kind of a good reason and the other uh, is for a reason where things are going really bad so let's start with just a regular stock split some people may be familiar with that, but I'm going to explain it anyway. So why do companies split their stock? There's only really one reason why, and that's because their stock has gained in value over the years and it's gotten to a level that the management might think that there's not so many retail smaller investors that are able to invest in the stock because the price has gotten really high. And the most famous example of this is obviously Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. He never split the A-class stock and the stock is now like $280,000. So there's not a lot of people that can shell out $280,000 for Berkshire Hathaway stock. So what he did, and even though he said he would never split the stock, um, he didn't really split the stock for the reasons of getting more retail customers so much he said he did it more because there were some funds that were threatening to uh buy the the berkshire hathaway stock and then sell off units like smaller chunks kind of like a mutual fund to smaller investors as a way for them to invest in berkshire hathaway so what he did was he took the A shares and made some B shares, which were 1 30th the value of the A share. And then a few years later, he split it uh, 50 times. So really the B share is 1 15th hundredth, 1 15 hundredth of the A share. Um, so the B share is about close to $200 a share and the A share is close to $300,000 a share. So that's the most, famous example but usually companies do it when their stock gets up to you know two hundred dollars or something and they do like a, a four for one uh, split and so now the stock is fifty dollars and that makes it more affordable in a lot of people's eyes so let's see how that would work um, with a real world example so let's say that you have one share of Apple stock and Apple is currently trading at $100. So this $100 bill represents your investment in Apple and how much it's worth. So one share is worth $100. Now, if Apple comes along and says, you know what, $100 is a little too expensive. We want to get the price down to $20. That will make it more convenient for people to buy. So what do they do? They say, okay, that $100, we're going we're gonna to take that $100, put it over here, and we're going to give you these five $20 bills. Okay? So that's the easiest way to understand a regular split is they're just giving you change for 100 You got 100 here's five 20s everybody knows that it's the exact same thing okay you just have now five shares that are twenty dollars each instead of one share that's a hundred dollars so that's the easiest way to explain a regular stock split now the reverse stock split is done for a completely different reason and the reason is usually a, a number of reasons all of them bad <laughs> okay um the number one reason that a stock split is done, a reverse stock split is done, is to remain uh, listed on the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ. They have listing requirements that the share price can't fall below 
a certain amount for like 30 days. And I think right now it's like $4 a share. So if your share price falls below $4 a share in 30 days, you could get relisted, uh, delisted. And that means you would have to go list where the real, uh, you know, the pink sheets, the bulletin boards, uh, basically where the penny stocks trade, the scammy stocks. And so no company wants that. So what they do is they do a reverse stock split. So it's the reverse of the example I just gave you. Let's say you have five shares of a company and the company is trading at $20 each. And the company says, hey, we're going to take these five shares and we're going to give you only one share. So what could that one share be? Well, these five shares at $20 each are worth $100. So they're going to say, okay, we're going to take these five at $20 each and give you this one share that's $100. So now the stock is trading at $100 instead of $20. Of course, in real life, this never happens at these levels, $20 and $100. It usually happens like, you know, $2 or $1 or something like that. So as you see happened with USO recently, they did a reverse uh, one for eight reverse split at around $2 a share. So basically what they said was anybody who has eight shares of stock at $2 each, meaning worth $16, we're going to take those eight shares and we're going to give you one share for $16. Now, that's exactly the same thing, right? Yes. And so what, what does that really accomplish? Only one thing for them. It keeps their stock price above the delisting range. But those are usually temporary measures and they're usually a sign of desperation. So anytime you see a reverse stock split, I would stay away from it because, like I said, it's a desperate move for a company whose fortunes are in decline severely, meaning they're losing money and investors are bailing on them. Uh, another bad reason for a reverse stock split is a lot of companies um, kind of have the idea that mutual funds and institutional investors don't want to buy stocks that are under five dollars that might have changed a little bit in the last few years or whatever but um, it's still generally any stock that's under five dollars it means that they have problems and a lot of people want to usually stay away from them one other thing is that sometimes companies have kind of covenants or rules within their their borrowing agreements, their bonds, they, they might have covenants that if their share price falls below a certain level or if they get delisted from the NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange, then there may be some kind of penalties or you know some bonds may become due earlier or something like that. So that's another thing that companies want to try to avoid. Um, so the two examples just recently happened is obviously USO, the eight for one reverse split. Um, that's, you know, like I said, an act of desperation. They don't want to get delisted. And the other one is the Chesapeake CHK did a 200, uh, one for 200 reverse split. So their stock was trading at like 15 cents and they did a 200, one for 200 reverse split. Now it's like $30, but you see that they're losing boatloads of money. There's just an article today I just saw saying that Chesapeake is most likely going to be filing for bankruptcy. So this is just two weeks after they did this desperation move of the reverse split to stay listed. Um, also, there was some kind of covenant that if they get delisted, they would have to issue some preferred uh, stock. So there's all kinds of reasons, all of them bad, for why companies do reverse splits. So that's the difference between a share, a stock split and a stock reverse split. One is generally positive and one is almost always negative. So when you see a reverse stock split, stay away.
So that's my video. I hope you liked it. If you did, give me that thumbs up, leave me a comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.